Chapter 14 Next morning, Anthony shoveled all the money out of the Sabutio box and into our school bags. We're going to have to keep it with us, all the time, no days off. If we leave it in the house, we'll get burgled, or she'll find it. We can't put it in your den, we can't put it in the bank, we have to keep it with us. Maybe, maybe we should just stay off sick. But we're not sick, I replied. No good anyway, they're casting for the nativity play today. We've got to get parts or our cover's blown. So we put the bags of cash on our backs. And to be metaphorical about it, the money had become a burden. There was a man outside putting a sign up that said, This is a home watch area. Dad said it was pretty ironic putting it up on the day after the burglary. We set out for school. Terry from IT was getting into his car and he pointed to the sign and he went, Irony, eh? Do they still do irony at school? If they ask you for an example, that's it. OK, will do, said Anthony and walked on. When we were crossing the field, I said, What if we don't get picked for the nativity play? We'll get picked, don't worry. When we were at All Saints Primary, everyone wanted to be in the nativity play because you got a special party of your own afterwards. It turned out to be different at Great Ditton. When Mr Quinn came in and said, Right, 5M, this, is, this class is going to provide Mary, Joseph and the Shepherds for the Junior's Nativity Play. Who wants to be Joseph? I shot my hand up in the air, the same as anyone would. But when I looked round, instead of being surrounded by waving arms, I was on my own. Not one other boy put his hand up. They were all just sitting there looking at me. I couldn't understand it. Then I looked closer and saw that every one of them was clutching a £20 note under their desks. Anthony had paid them all off. Mr Quinn looked uncomfortable. No one else? I kept my hand up there. No one else wants to be St Joseph? Damien? Damien could be a shepherd. He's probably had enough of saints, eh? Jake, what about you? Couldn't do it, sir. Allergy, sir. Allergy to what? Synthetic, sir. Mr Quinn looked puzzled. The beard? I kept my hand held high through all of this, so he had to pick me in the end. Trying the costume on was interesting. I'd always endeavoured to emulate the saints, but I'd never actually dressed like one before. I had sandals, a crook, a big black beard. Mr Quinn helped me put them on. He said, St Joseph never did anything weird, did he? I mean, he didn't spurt milk or levitate or anything. Not unless being visited by angels is weird, I said. He looked at me, searching in the eye, and then said, No, no, I can live with that. Anthony was playing one of the kings. His teacher, Miss Nugent, said, Now there are three kings. Which one do you want to be? The one with the gold. Miss Nugent made Anthony a block of gold out of a Rockport shoebox and wrapped up in gold paper. He carried that block of gold with him everywhere. He became interested and inspired by historical aspects of this, the nativity story. For instance, he said to me, Do you realise how much a block of gold that big would be worth in today's prices? A lot. An awful lot. Makes you wonder. What? I said. Well, he had all this money and then later on when he was grown up, he was poor. He must have spent it. He must have had a great time. We had a big dress rehearsal. We didn't go home after school. We all took sandwiches and waited in our class for our turn to see the makeup lady, which was Trisha's mum. There were dozens of little girls dressed as angels. They had to stand in the corridor and practice Silent Night and Little Donkey until they sounded like real angels. And Miss Nugent kept giving them orange squash. I know they weren't really angels, but they still made me feel safer. Trisha's mum drew lines on my face with an eyebrow pencil to make me look old and she made my hair grey with flour and I was ready to go on. 
I had already managed to Google up quite a lot about St Joseph. I think Miss Nugent found it all very useful. For instance, when it was my turn to knock on the inn door, she said, Remember now, Damien, be tired. St Joseph had walked a very long way and he's very tired. I said, Well, he was a carpenter, so he was very fit. And the walk from Natherus, well, people did walks like that all the time, so it would have been like taking a bus to them. Also, she was going to have a baby, so they weren't actually planning to sleep. They might have been stressed, but I wouldn't have said tired. You could see she was impressed by the way she said, whatever, and went straight on to the Three Kings. When I came off, Trisha's mum said my beard was too tight. The elastic's making your ears go red. See if I can fix it for you. I went into the boy's toilet to try and loosen it in the mirror. There was a man already in there with a huge black beard and a wooden, big wooden staff. St Joseph, I said. Date's unknown. I just had to say this. You're doing a great job. Thanks very much, I said. I'm not making you sound too stressed, am I? No, said St Joseph. I was stressed. The way you're playing it puts me right back in there. Thanks, I said. Do you want me to take you through the birth? The, through the obstetrics ha, has really changed. I think we're going to skip that bit, I said to St Joseph. OK, well, break a leg. In the corridor, Mr Quinn said, What about the bag, Damien? Not going to be carrying that round with you on the night, I hope. I'd got so used to the bag that I'd forgotten it was there. I couldn't, if I couldn't carry it, where could I put it? I looked at Anthony and he just shrugged. What are you wearing it for anyway, said Mr Quinn. I looked at Anthony again. He looked at me pleadingly. Mr Quinn said, you don't need it, do you? He was coming towards me. He was going to take it off me, but I blurted out, my mum's dead. And he took a step backwards immediately, raised his hands and said, OK, I'm sure St Joseph was carrying a lot of stuff with him on that day. Why don't you go and practice with Dave? Dave was the donkey. He was made out of plywood and fun fur. He stood on a wooden platform with casters on it and he had a pair of sacking saddlebags stuffed with straw. I took him out in the corridor and practised pulling him up and down with Mary on his back. It took a while, but I eventually got the knack of steering him, and we powered up and down the lino, doing three-point turns by the fire doors. Rebecca, who was playing Mary, kept saying, <clears throat> I will be the mother of God, over and over, and we could hear the angels practising it was on a starry night in Miss Nugent's class, and I wish that I could live my whole life inside a nativity play. That night I was still humming, it was on a starry night when I went up to bed. There was going to be a collection for water aid after the play. The angels were supposed to give out envelopes before and collect them in again afterwards. I managed to get a whole packet of envelopes. I lay on the floor putting a £20 note in each one. I was planning to put them in a bag and hand them to Angel Gabriel. Suddenly a big leather sandal stood on the envelopes. There was a huge hairy foot on it. I looked up above and there standing with them there above me in a brown robe with a massive man inside. Round his waist was a belt with seven chunky iron keys dangling from it. I sat up and hit my head on one of the biggest. The big man said a swear word. I won't say what it which one it was as it was unenlightening. And then he said don't put your address on the back of them. They pass it on to other charities. I said, St Peter? He just swore again. Don't remind me. It wasn't the nicest way to go. Put your address on the put your address on the back there. You'll be besieged. I promise you. Every tin shaker in Christledom will be on your doorstep. Believe me, I know what I'm talking about. I'm infallible. I actually had written our address on some of the envelopes, but only a few. Is this yours? And he was holding up a key. 
It was the key to our old house. I normally kept it on the windowsill. Jointed pin tumbler, engineering perfection that. The drum action is miraculous. I'm the patron saint of keys, you know. Now, about this money. It's stolen, I said. I know. I'm the patron saint of keys and locks and security arrangements in general. I know it's hot. Does that mean we should give it back, I said. But if we do, they'll burn it, so that's bad too, isn't it? I keep trying to do good, but everything's messed up. You're stressed, said St Peter. I'm stressed. We're all stressed. This is my portfolio, right? Like I said, keys, locks, security. On top of that, fisherman, popes, Rome. I am run off my feet. I suppose to mind the gate too, you know. I see everyone in and everyone out. Do you really? Everyone, I asked. Yeah. Why? Was there someone you were looking for? I said, well, but then I changed my mind. No, it doesn't matter. He looked at me and sat on the end of the bed. I'm going to tell you something now, Damien, that I've never mentioned to anyone. Didn't mention it to Luke or Mark or John when they were asking, just kept it to myself. But it's true. Are you listening? And then he told me the story of feeding the 5,000. I didn't like to say it was fairly well documented and well, widely known. But he talked about all the people following Jesus and listening to him and how Jesus never planned anything and how every time Jesus got hungry, he acted like this was a completely unexpected development. He wouldn't put a scarf in his pocket if he was climbing at Everest, he said, and he definitely didn't bring a picnic for these people. The police said that there were 5,000, but I reckon there was twice that number, easy, and they're all starving. Do you know what he did? asked St Peter. Well, I didn't want to spoil his story, but I had to admit, five loaves, two fish? No. You see, I knew you'd say that. That's what everyone said afterwards, and I'll tell you why they said it. Guilt. So, sorry, what? I said. A little kid came up to him, about your size, said St Peter. His name was... Uh, I've forgotten. I still see him sometimes. Anyway, he came up with these loaves and sardines, and Jesus just blessed them and passed them round. He wasn't trying to do a miracle. He was just one of those people who thought of everything would be all right. You know? Anyway... So he passed these sardines, and the first person he passed them to passed them on. Know why? Because he had a honey cake and a piece of lamb hidden in his purse. So he passed on the fish and sneaked the honey cake out and made out he'd just eaten it off the plate. And then the next person had a pocket full of dates. So he did the same. Sneaked one out, passed the plate on. And so it went on. The truth was, said St Peter... Every single one of them had food with them, but they were all keeping it to themselves, hidden away. Every one of them looking after number one. And they would have starved where they stood rather than let anyone else see. But as the plate came round with the loaves and the fish on, they all got their own food out and started to eat. And as they ate, they started to share and then it became the biggest picnic in history. And the plate went all the way round and back to Jesus. And this kid, oh, think of his name in a minute. And it still had the fish and the loaves on. And Jesus was a bit taken aback. And when he could see, and when he could look up, he'd been talking the whole time, he could see that everyone was eating. So he said, what happened? And I just said, a miracle. Because I didn't want to badmouth anyone in front of him. I was always bad-mouthing people and he hated it and it was a turning into a nice evening and at the time he didn't say anything and I thought I'd fooled him. But now I see it was some kind of miracle. The best kind. Because all those people had all they needed except something. I don't know what you call it. Uh, courage maybe or grace. And then this little kid, he stood up and suddenly everyone got there got bigger. And all, they were all filled with it. And they were all there for hours, talking, laughing, drunk on this stuff, this grace or whatever. 
a little kid stood up and was ready to be generous and that's all it took one little kid he wasn't he wasn't planning to save the world he was just planning lunch he did the right thing at the right time one little kid and a plate of fish 5,000 people sorted and that's according to the police like I said it was twice that easy do you understand what I'm talking about asked St Peter mm, a, a bit I said I'm talking about you said St Peter mm, uh, now I'm really lost look I can't say too much because there's free will and all that to think about but I will say this see this key it was the key to our old house. Miracle of the Lockmaker's Ark, this. Keep it with you. Keep it safe. I think I can say that without going too far. Keep it with you. Keep it safe. 